Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 kids, and welcome to our podcast. Where it's just two girls just talking about being bros. On. Honestly, <laughs> I was about to go on YouTube. What the? I was like, I can't, I'm, I'm, I can't remember what our intro is. I'm getting the two confused. This is too much for me. I have um. to hire someone else. <laughs> the number of times you've gone this wrong is insurmountable. It's, I'm kidding, yeah, it's this fine. is getting ridiculous. We what, we reached our literally our four year podcast anniversary about a week ago. Yeah, and I still don't know the intro, guys. So <laughs> honestly, though, I don't think I think I've probably messed it up just as many times as you did. Um, mm -hmm. But hey, hey gross. We're, we're not perfect. We're, we're just here to show you guys we're human too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. I can't believe that we've been podcasting for four years. Not our YouTube channel, but um, the podcast specifically. <laughs> yeah. For four years. Yeah. Which is crazy. It's because it was uh literally a week ago or less About, than a week yeah. ago. For yeah. Give or take. January twelfth. Yeah. Thank goodness we did. Thank goodness you said you said the words. Why don't we start podcast? Literally, isn't that Here weird we to think about? Yeah, Look I wish we now. did it sooner, but I mean, hey, at least we did it. I win them all. We're all cracking open a, a, a cold one. <laughs> it's it's Lent, so I can't have milk. So this is my caffeine intake for the day. <laughs> is it Lent already? It's not Lent already. It's because um, uh, the Julian calendar today is the when John the Baptist baptized Jesus tomorrow. So then yeah. tonight's a thing. Remember, you went to the thing with us that one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Lent. Wait, so should I be doing Not Lent, already? whatever. But, uh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. No, 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 no. Because that's not Lent, days. but it's the days that you can't eat meat, meat or milk. So okay, it's okay. like in Ukraine. I don't know what is peace. It's all the same thing in Ukrainian. Okay. So I I, I know I know what it um, means. I don't know what it's called in English. Okay, but it's not Lent. Yeah, it scared me there. It scared me. I was like, whoa. No, but it, it is all Lent. It's technically. Oh, it's true. All the but same. yeah. But like when I like when I think of when I like say Lent, I mean like the forty days right before Easter, which I think starts beginning of February, if I'm correct. Fair. I, don't know. I didn't look up the exact. Yeah, date. depends. So it like, depends. Do you know apparently, Lent is determined. Uh, it's or Easter's determined. It's like the f uh. The first full forty days after the first full moon after Christmas or something. Someone told me that, and I was like, you could oh, wow. be lying, but I will believe you. It so, sounds, fun fact, it sounds it's legit. Just, like, down. <laughs> like, I, I trust that. It sounds made up. <laughs> like, we, that, well, yeah. But it sounds, like, so made up that it has to be legit. Like, someone wouldn't just know that off the top of their head, you know? Yeah, and so who who would just make that up and just spread that around? And why would so many people believe it, you know? That's yeah. what I'm concerned about. But yeah. I'll allow it. Yeah, Lent's such a... It's a, <laughs> a, a yearly tradition that we do here on Two Girls Being Bros is... Or just for ourselves, but then we talk about it on the podcast. Is we do a, a what, we, yeah. what we determine or call a cleanse, and basically we just don't eat sugar, um, junk food like the basic like cookies, cupcakes, cake, muffins, like the whole, chips, that whole, chips like all the the basic junk food. You know, that's what we do. Yeah. So and I I'm so, gonna do it again this year. I don't know about you, but oh I yeah, I'll give it a shot. I last year, to. last year quarantine. Yeah threw me for a loop because it started yeah. halfway so it threw me off threw mm -hmm. me off my game i wasn't That's prepared for that and then my sister started baking so oh, i remember i that. literally couldn't pass it up i yeah. remember that i remember you Those... sending me snaps and i was like please refrain like <laughs> please don't show me i haven't had chocolate in 40 days don't send me these chocolate chip cookies please i don't want to like, see it oh guys oh wait I i'll show you guys a picture of it oh my gosh she put it on her instagram and i was like this this is oh, why right the now. cleanse stopped immediately i I, I mean if i, I lived in the same household absolutely i would I would have came, and they so. were fresh too oh Oof. there's nothing better than a soft freshly baked cookie and I don't know what she put in there, but they were the best, best fresh baked cookies I've ever tasted in my entire life. Okay, let me find my sister's so account. What is oh, your favorite is cookie it? ever? Are you asking me? Yeah, just I'm or curious. The fans. Oh, everyone, everyone, leave a comment down below. What's your favorite cookie? Could be like, like um, what's it called? Like a produce one? I don't know, like an Oreo, or is it, or like a type of flavoring, whatever. Like, overall type cookies, I'm kind of fine as long as they're all, like, any of them, as long as they're well done. So, like, I don't really like very crispy ones. I don't like overly sweet ones. Not mm. a big fan of filled cookies. Mm -hmm. But 
those cookies it was one time i think a bunch of us went to to the mall after school one time and we went to nordstrom and they had cookies on sale it were like toffee score cookies or something they had like little toffee oh, bits in it okay. those were the best cookies i've ever eaten i remember that, that the, mm, it's in um, not like gusa terry's gusa terry's in, yeah 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 uh, Saks Fifth avenue you know, that's the score yeah. ones those were yeah those are those are legit those are really that. good thing okay me? okay yeah, uh, so okay. just blur blur out my sister's name oh, yeah, yeah, on this one i'm gonna try to wait i'm gonna do it close enough that you don't see her name but then you can't really see the cookies but yeah she took the first of all she took that photo she also made the cookies maybe i'll show you remember they were so good just started baking that image just popped in my head i was like oh <laughs> i remember that <laughs> <laughs> How could I forget? I am literally like the person who's like obsessed with anything sugary. But I say my yeah. favorite cookie, a double chocolate chip. Oh, I don't know. Those get Ooh. me real good. Nice chewy ones too, not hard. I do love oatmeal cookies. They're usually well done because they're not mm -hmm. as sweet as other ones, but they're still they're like um more toffee like. You know, like yeah, they kind of they're it, more sticky. I kind of like those types of cookies more. For me, I tell myself it's like a healthy treat because it has oatmeal, even though it's like probably definitely not and has the same sugar content as most of the other cookies, but they're so good. Underrated. Speaking, speaking of oatmeal, mm -hmm. so today, obviously I can't have milk. I was like, I can't have any dairy and no meat. So I love, everybody knows I'm a cream girl. I love my cream. So yeah. drinking black coffee is not an option. I can drink without sugar. I can't drink without cream. Mm -hmm. So I was so desperate today that I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own oat milk today. So I made it. Wow. It was fine. I don't have a great strainer. So like it was still a little bit like powdered banners. So I put in my coffee and I was like, I was so excited. I was like, this is going to taste so good. Oh my gosh. I put it in and it's exactly just like milk. And I forgot how much I hate milk in my coffee. It's oh, useless. No. It doesn't do anything. Like... Oh, okay, just leave it there. And it, the, Sorry. The thing... Well, did we both get a package today? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. And our and dad's brought it to us? Literally 10 minutes apart. Whoa. Is this that's the same crazy. Guy? They're probably on the same truck. <laughs> yeah, oh, my okay. gosh. That's probably the same guy. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, and I, I just realized, I have to find how to make a non-dairy cream. cream. Mm -hmm. I could care less about milk. It tasted fine. I put, it was like, all it was was oats, water, uh, maple syrup, and then vanilla, and then a little bit of salt, which, and it mm -hmm. tastes like the flavor of it was good. I just need a better, to better filter. And also milk in my coffee is never an option for me anymore. Unless it's a latte where it's like 90% milk and then just a shot mm -hmm. of espresso. But what I did was like, I just made a regular cup of coffee and then poured a little bit of milk in it. So it was like, like a deep chocolate brown. And I was like, this is... <laughs> Not it. I have they standards, you know? They, def <laughs> they definitely have um, um, non-dairy creamers. Like, for sure. There definitely is, like... I've seen a oat milk non-dairy creamer on, like, someone's TikTok. Fair, but those like, are usually they, loaded with preservatives. Yeah. 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 Probably true. So I want to find one, like, kind of an oat milk, but how do you... Because the only difference between cream and milk is the fat content. You know, that's what makes it thicker. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you could do it, but stay tuned, guys. I'm going to be the first person to come up with with, with uh, a, a dairy-free cream just so that I can have my coffee on Lent. Yeah, just, like, for those, just literally, like, a two-month period. But, you know, hey, smart. For real, though? But actually, it's a genius I could probably idea. Go well, I mean, vegan. it already exists, but, yeah. I could probably go vegan if I had a substitute for cream. You know, like, that's about <laughs> it. But so far, nothing. Can't win them all. I just, or butter. Um, if you, we should do. You should do a cream taste test. If oh, if we do um a day like a vlog style stuff, you just you testing non dairy creamers, <laughs> and 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 regular. Okay, creamers. fair. Rank ranking creamers. I can do that. <laughs> Rank list. Ranking creamers. Um, what's it called? But while you were saying that, I thought of another another great merch idea for our, our merch line. Um, cream girl. <laughs> Our, our merch hey guys, it's I mean, cream girl it's it's getting it's getting crazy guys get you have to subscribe um yeah right might as well do it now go subscribe right now to our channel if you're watching this if you're listening go to our youtube subscribe if you want to see this merch line <laughs> come on it's gonna be iconic yeah there's so Stay many tuned. good pieces of merch oh yeah
And also, if anybody out there's wait, if anybody out there wants a Roxanne Beauty Saloon, Roxanne's Beauty Saloon shirt, let me know. We'll make the merch for you guys happen because everyone's been requesting yeah. another episode. So, Don't worry, we are planning on coming back. We already have two clients, one and a half. One is half, half in, half out. <laughs> yeah. And then we always have myself. Worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So me, comment down below, tell so Vic boring. to let me cut her hair. <laughs> Guys, I like the thing is like she can do it, but it's gonna be the most boringest video ever because I'm not going anything dramatic. I will not dye my hair. What we're we're gonna cut off like like an inch, and then it's gonna look the exact same because my hair is curly. <laughs> Let's. I mean, I guess it'd be good for have me or... straighten your hair. I mean, Roxanne's beauty soon expanding from just cutting. Exactly. So let us know what you want. And then I can- and You can also send can us a DM. I can do a spa day Insta. for you. Okay. Um, I love the idea and the thought, but I actually have a, I have a thing about- um, I don't like spas. This is- Like, I've always- I hate the ideas of them. I don't want to ever go to one. Like, I just- I've always hated it. And this is actually funny because my aunt, I think it was for my- I don't remember. One of those birthdays. Maybe 13 or 16. I don't remember, but my aunt was like, my aunt took my, my oldest cousin to the spa, and she was like, oh, next year, I'm going to take you to the spa, and you're like, whatever, I'll say 13th, or, I don't know, I'll say 13th, 13th birthday, and then when she said that, like, my heart sunk, and I, because <laughs> there's something that just, I don't know, the thought of a spa makes me so uncomfortable, like, it does, it, it's supposed to be, like, relaxing and everything, but for me, I don't know, I just hate the idea of a spa, nothing about it seems relaxing, I don't want people touching me, I don't want, like, I don't know, it's just, I don't know how to explain it, I just hate the idea of a spa, I've never been, so I also could just be, you know, judging it. I too have never been, so I also it. do not know what it's like. Yeah, but just But I like the it, idea I of walking around in a robe. That, that does, honestly, you seem like a spa girl. I can, I can see you, like, walking around, like, getting pampered, living life large, you know? I, I would love to be pampered, but, <laughs> but actually, oh, there was something I wanted to say about that. Because you brought up a good point. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't get the point of saunas. Oh, like, makes no people, sense. people, like, my my brother and my dad are always like, oh, yeah, you know, we should put in a sauna in our house. And I was like, bro, why? It's just, a, it's, it's, a, it's like a hot bath. Just turn yeah. up the, the crank up the heat and you're sweating. Who is, <laughs> you enter a room and I've been in a sauna, so this is why I don't get it. Yeah. You just sit there, naked with other people, and just sweat. I don't get it. It makes I no don't. sense to me. And, like, I... I don't get it. Because I've, I've stepped in one, and I can handle max, like, 20 seconds without, like, I'm about to pass out because I literally cannot breathe. And I get it's supposed to be... It's supposed to clear, like, your sinuses, right? I think that's one Not of the benefits of it. Not your sinuses. Your, like, your, your pores. Or like, by, oh, because yeah, sweating, sweating, sweating is good man. for you. But yeah, yeah. I don't even breathe in there. Like, yeah, you might clean out your pores, but you're also cleaning out your air supply and you're going to pass out and die. Um, that's an extreme. That's not true. Uh, but that's also not true. No, 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 not an extreme. It's not true. Yeah. yeah. But also, don't you guys keep your house at, like, 27 degrees anyways? <laughs> <laughs> the sun is the same heat as our house. It's just filled with moisture now. Yeah. No, I lo I, a hot tub, I can understand because that's cool. Yeah. You're outside, it's kind of cold, and you're in a warm bath. But a sauna, mm -hmm. and then you have to throw you have to throw water onto burning what? logs yeah. in here. That's no thanks. No. What if sense. it goes wrong? What if you get stuck in there? You're literally gonna get cooked. That happened in um. Me in the summer. In it's show. 33 degrees in my house. All I'm missing is I throw some 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 steam in a pot and we're good to go. I pour I I'll pour freaking water on my body and it'll sizzle right off. Like it. I don't get, I don't get it. it. I don't I don't get the obsession. I don't get it. If anyone is into that, let us know why. I guess maybe it is good for your pores if you, but like, but like do do a workout and you'll sweat. Yeah, you can sweat in other ways. I sweat all the time, <laughs> right now. Because your house is at like thirty degrees. Um, no, nothing wrong with don't, that. Don't don't. I well, I, don't hate it. I hope you know that my dad came home. It was literally twenty three point nine degrees in my house in my living room. He enters mm -hmm. and he's like, "Why is it so cold?" And he went and he like turned up the That's thermostat. So I told I mean, him like, that you keep it at like 22 on the on the <laughs> the first floor. He, I think he was going to cry. Like it literally he was like <laughs> distraught. Like I'm pretty sure he was so close to being like, you can't go over to her house. You know, it's like, like other <laughs> other factors. It's like, oh, if someone's house is too cold, you can't go over to their house. No, that's that's but the reason you can't come in over anymore. You're going to catch a cold at my house. 
like forget about catching cold my dad's like your your joints are gonna break and i was like yeah he's like you what you're gonna bend your knee and just snaps in half it's frozen i was like I, yeah i have to I wear 30 layers think, into your house i don't even think it's at 22 degrees i'm not gonna lie to you maybe we'll do a live check later i don't even think it's reached there like but like i get it because <laughs> well i mean i get i guess i'm kind of used to it now but like i notice it in the mornings like i don't want to wake up because it's so cold <laughs> One like, one year our furnace broke, so we had to we had to call in a furnace guy. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, I I woke up in the morning and I I, I thought I died. Like I was like it is, and it was nineteen degrees, and because we had we bought like heat lamps, mm -hmm. and like we all like huddled in the in the living room. It was nineteen was degrees, so and we were all like just crying. It was horrible. That's so funny. Oh, Delilah, in the background here. Oh, she just walked in. You can't see her. Oh she's my, my best gosh! Friend. Speaking of Delilah, I have a story for you guys. Oh, it also involves my birthday. Could you tell? I'm a year older. Hi. She's um, so old. <laughs> I'm so old. Uh, also, it's Roxanne's half birthday. You gotta acknowledge the more important celebration. Um, but on that day, so uh, I'll tell you how I spent, you know, my birthday, my B-Day, guys. Quick little, um, almost got my phone run over by a car. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Here's the story. So I wake up, you know, I slept in whatever. And then um, it was my turn to get um, to take Delilah for a walk, my dog. And you know, Delilah, she's a big girl. Not a little, she's a big girl, a big girl, little baby situation going on. She's for the most part well trained. Like when we go on walks, she's pretty trained. Like she'll walk beside me. But you know, if she sees another dog, she gets excited. If she sees someone, she might get excited. You know, the usual puppy behavior. So we've had her for a full year now, about over a year, and you know, like other than like little incidents of her getting her excited, like she's never been, she's never done anything crazy on a walk before. So you know, I thought nothing of it. I took my dog for a walk, the usual. We did the whole block around my street. We're literally coming home. We're literally at like so we there and in front of us. So when we turn the corner, and for like half the street, there's like a dog in front of us, and she wasn't she wasn't pulling at all like she wants because she saw that it was, she, the dog was further like far enough in front that he wasn't and he wasn't interested in her sorry Delilah but he didn't want to play whatever like it, it was it was fine it was totally fine she wasn't pulling towards him nothing so we get right to the like side street right in front of my house so literally it's like the side street we have to cross it and then there's two houses and then mine like literally that's how close we were to home and then at the side street I stop because we always stop to check if any cars are coming so we don't get run over right the huge so I'm where we stop, we look for both ways, no cars. Out of nowhere, I don't know why, Delilah, just from zero to 100 acceleration, starts bolting it. And this dog is 95 pounds, you know, compared to me. She's, I was so shocked and thrown off guard because she's never done anything like this ever, that she just went from zero to 100. That I start like I was like shocked. I start running with her. I didn't let go of the leash because I I don't know. It was just I just didn't even have time to think. Like I didn't know what to do. And I literally I swear to God I've never run that fast in my life. Side note, like I've never I don't think I've ever run <laughs> at that speed with that like um, energy ever in my life. My phone. I felt my phone was in my pants pocket. I felt to go flying because like we're at, we're crossing the side street. I felt to go flying in the middle of the road, but I was not letting go of the leash yet. So I was still like running trying to see if she would stop. But she literally did not stop running, and then literally the house before mine, I just had to let go because I was I was about to face plant on the ground. Yeah. And then she well she ran straight home because I think what happened is my she heard my mom was on the porch, so I think she might have heard or like smelt because you know how dogs have insane senses. Um, my mom coming outside all the way from the side street that she just bolted it home to go see her, but like. I think that was the reason, but she's never done anything like that with me, with any of my family members. So like, I was shocked. I was not expecting it. I was thrown off guard, right? So uh, after me almost face planning on my birthday, I, I'm like, oh, I better go collect my phone. So I'm going like, kind of like speed walking back because it's in the middle of the freaking road. And then I see a car <laughs> coming and I see it put on its turn signal to turn on that side street. And I was like, you're kidding. like my phone's about to get run over on my birthday 
like I was like and then it just like you know just like the flashback of everything happened and I felt I heard I just I got a flashback of me spilling my matcha latte on my laptop and having to spend money on that and I was like oh my god <laughs> here we go again I'm about to have enough to spend drop another thousand on a phone that was perfectly fine and the card turns and I'm like I was like okay it's what I deserve <laughs> I but then I it go happens. pick it up clean I guess the tire missed it not a scratch not a crack I was like okay Thank you. It's, it must be a birthday miracle. You lucked out. I really did. Like... It could have been really bad. Oh my god, when I saw that card, my heart was like, boom. <laughs> she sunk, I was like, what is it? But it was just such a strange experience. And, if, and the worst part was that I had to run past, like, the two women walking that other dog. And there was, like, a bun like a family outside. And I was like, it's more embarrassing than anything. Like, just to see this girl take off. Like, I should have just let go. But, like, everything was so fast that I just didn't even have time to think. You know? It was one of those yeah, crazy situations. But that was my that was my birthday. But then I went. Um, It was before the stay-at-home order. So... Me and Roxanne and Nadia went on a walk, and they gave, gifted me a, a beautiful present, and and with their presents. So. Yeah, and a lot of uh, nice. like a bunch of our her friends, we all got together to buy her some good stuff. Mhm. Mm so it was, so. it was very nice. You know, celebrated the best way you can in quarantine. Yeah. With and the, then we went with skating we the do. the next day too, so that was. Yeah, so you got to see fun. everyone. Yeah. Even Andri showed up for you. <laughs> I know he didn't wish me happy birthday, but that's okay. He he wished that's me okay. in person. It's you know? co it's COVID. He's taking a break from all that. Yeah, you, me and Andre, that, that guy and me. Well, I, I love our friendship. <laughs> it's the weird. Like, it's we the funniest before, thing ever. But yeah, you and Andre, it's honestly hilarious. Like the just the first of all, just mine and Andre's relationship is so unique, and then just mm -hmm. how like, because like we have like a very frenemy relationship. So it's like for example, mm -hmm. he one time turns to me and he's like, you know, I'm gonna sue you one day. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And then he was like, and Victory, because I was texting Victory about how he just said that. And he was like, tell Victory I'm going to sue her too. And I'm he's going to be a co the co-defendant. <laughs> he's not. He's going to yeah. do it. One time he was like, oh, see that Tesla? I'm going to buy Tesla after I sue you. And I was like, bold of you to assume I would have enough money yeah. he's, he's in my pocket to purchase a Tesla. <laughs> like, he's thank you? Like, is that a compliment? Time. That's the only way he's going to get a Tesla? By suing me? I'll take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But this guy, I kid you not. So like, he didn't text Victory for her birthday. He knew. He knew. I told her, I uh, him, and then he didn't text Stefa for her birthday, and he didn't text Yerena for her birthday. And I was like, um, because Yerena's birthday was third, so I like tell him. I was like, oh, it's Yerena's birthday, and he was like, okay. I was like, you can text her happy birthday, and he was like, no, and I was like, why not? And he's like, it's COVID. I'm taking a break from that, you know. And he's like, I didn't text it for Victor. I didn't text it for Stefan. It's consistency. Yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, it's, it's fair. It's fair. You know, one of us would have got so jealous. That, and, you know, <laughs> exactly. And they didn't text us. And then, you know, it would. He was smart because you know, me, Stefan, you know, we probably wouldn't be friends after that. You know, if <laughs> something like that happens, there's the no coming back us? from yeah. it. No. No. There's no coming back from you know, that. and it's, it's like specifically just Andre. Like anyone else, whatever. But like, if Andre only texted one of the three of us. Like, that's it. <laughs> and and Victor and Andri, I don't think they've ever had a normal interaction. But I think my no. favorite interaction ever was when um, he literally, like, sent her a picture of the Twizzlers and was like, you jealous? But then I would top that was that the day after we went skating together and he showed up, <laughs> he gave her, like, a bunch oh. of Tic Tacs. And he was like, happy birthday. And he, like, put it in her I just Tic Tacs. And then but I was like, that's so special because he doesn't give it to anyone. <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, okay, I'll take it, Andre, and I'll take it. But it just you reminds know? me too, because we usually, um, always we usually have like a, an Among Us game night once a week with, you know, the squad, and then, <laughs> just my favorite thing ever is me and Andre have this, um, like me and Roxanne obviously have a feud in Among Us, like I'm always sus, whatever, but like me and Andre have a different type of feud. If I, I don't know how to explain it, but like, basically he caught he killed me at admin card swipe. Um, twice, I like to say three times for like dramatic effect, <laughs> but like, um, I never, and after he said, after we were aligned, then he sliced me in my back, um, twice, I had admin card swipe, and I never want to li let him live it down, uh, and so like, we never, we never are, you know, we all, we're always enemies in that game, because I don't trust them, we have no trust, but then one time we got, we last game night, last game night, we got paired to be imposters, and together, and oh, it was just, 
Hey, well, it ended up failing hard because Roxanne meant to call it Andri, but then everyone thought she was talking about me, and then I got voted out, but I actually was the no, imposter. No, no. I meant to call out Victory because I, Andri killed me. I knew he was the imposter. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, because you were dead, and then you said, I wait. forget what happened. Oh, I made a mistake. Wait, wait. I know I know what happened. I, there's someone at my door. Yeah, you, Andri killed you, and then I made a mistake at my caller, and then you came back from the dead and called me out. So what happened was Andrea was the imposter. I did. I had a suspicion because obviously we sit next to each other, but like I didn't see his screen. The, there was a few times yeah, where yeah. I saw his screen, but I wouldn't. I would. Mm -hmm. I always like make sure to check myself out. Mm -hmm. But he went and he killed me. So I obviously knew it was Andrea, but I did know it was you. But it was because Victory was the color yellow, and she types in the chat, "I was with yellow and pink." Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. And Im immediately I, I was like. I didn't mean to type that at all. But she came oh, okay. back from the dead to say it. <laughs> listen, listen. If people are just gonna let you slide around, slip, slip, slide around like a little snake. Yeah. I don't want any that part was, of that. That was me and Andrea's chance to reconnect and reconcile our friendship. Almost reconciled our friendship, but. Yeah, yeah but not hard. quite. It's 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 funner when we don't trust each other. Exactly. Maybe if we try, we we well, tried we to be allies really, once, really, and then we all just got yeah. murdered. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Just one after next after next. Yeah. But it's okay. It's brutal. It keeps the game interesting, keeps the game fun. But, um, <laughs> My favorite part, though, is, before, is Remy. Fun plan for t oh, oh, sorry. Go. I want to say, so our friend Remy oh, yeah, no, said first. this in the Christmas podcast. Um, mm -hmm. uh, she, Me and her like are like BFFs now. But she doesn't know that Andri's not part of her squad because he only joins sometimes. But then, like for example, me, Victory, Nastya, Mel... Uh, Stefa and then Adrian oh, and then Nadia sometimes joins but he, <laughs> Remy didn't know that like Andri was part of our squad she thought probably it was like a rando and, like Andri will just always be like you're a rat <laughs> like, coming out of the sewer <laughs> he's so savage it's so funny and he never like oh he's so funny I guess. and then I got killed and they somehow voted out Remy and I was like guys guys <laughs> Remy wouldn't kill me ever in a million years but I mean yeah but yeah, we can go into the mm -hmm. game now. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say before we go into it, we can't forget. Oh. We have to do Song of the Week. Right. Um, so mine was uh, Heart to Break. And it's by Kim Petrus. It's actually, it's like a really bop of a song. I heard it on, not like, it's not a TikTok song. It was like a video of people singing along to it. I was like, what is this song? It seems like a jam. Mm -hmm. And I Googled it, and it's honestly a bop. Like, every time it comes on... It makes me. It just makes me groove. Like I just like break out to dance. Mm. Love it. Nice. Um, I'll check it out later. Um, and you should check it out too. Check it out. I play it on Spotify. Link in description. But um, my song of the week. Oh, ooh, I have another little fun story. So for right before my birthday, um, I think it was the weekend before. Literally last minute, I bought an uh, online ticket. A ticket to an online concert. There we go. And see, the thing is, I've been very skeptical. Obviously, we can't go to concerts, clearly. Um, right now, there's no concerts happening in the world. So, some people, artists are doing online concerts and stuff. Except Australia, live in life, nice. Can I, please, let me live there. Um, but I, I, no, okay, anyways. <laughs> the bugs. Um, but anyways. Uh, so, I was always very, been very skeptical about online concerts, because I'm like, is it worth it? Like, you know, you're paying to watch something that will probably be clips afterwards and you know i've been kind of like i don't know but then literally and i think literally two weeks ago because we recorded the podcast where i said my song of the week was candy by the artist becky Yun, i think that's my friend's name becky Yun. and then literally i saw that day after we recorded that he was having an online concert the sunday and i was like kind of into his music right now do i do it and then i was like it's like, it was 40 C8, well, with, it was 40 USD, so I don't know whatever the heck C8 that turned out to, but anyways, I was like, is it worth it, do I do it, do I do it, and then literally, because we went skiing that night too, and then after, literally, like an hour before, I was like, YOLO, it's my birthday, in four days, I'm going, and honestly, I must say, I didn't regret my purchase. Because as someone who, I'm someone who also, side note, it's probably not for everyone, but I'm someone who loves concerts. Like, I'm, obviously it's not the same as in person, but it was still so nice. Like, I don't know how to, it was like, I don't know, it was really cool. I, he did a great job. First of all, his voice, 
incredible. Holy smokes. Even through, like, a screen, I was like, wow, this guy, amazing. And, like, I don't know, I found it really cool. I don't know, if, like, I just, re I really miss concerts, so, like, that was a really, you know, the closest you can get to a concert experience, but, I don't know, I recommend going to an online concert, if anyone wants to be interested. But anyways... He performed one of his songs, uh, Amusement Park, which I've been obsessed with since he's since I heard it live. Holy smokes. Just, it's beautiful. It's not really my st style of music. Like, it's not upbeat, and, and um, or it's not even so much so R&B. It's just very chill, but his voice is just so beautiful. So that's my song of the week. And my concert nice. experience. <laughs> but yeah. Huh? Um, what's it called? So our, our... What, this isn't a game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I read that after. It's just a little segment we decide to do. Our review oh, wait. segment? Wait, wait, wait. You had a question. <gasps> oh, Remember? yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So I thought of this like a couple of nights ago and I was like, oh, I thought of a new segment we could do. And every week, because it was based on like the New Year's episode. If you didn't see that, go there. But Roxanne came up with a bunch of questions, and some of them were like really crazy and out there and random. And I was like, "Ooh, it'd be kind of fun just to have," but like in a good way. In a good way. I'm not saying in a bad sure. way. Like, I'm saying I, I loved it. I literally loved it. Um, but uh, I was like, "Ooh, why don't we like do that every week? Like, we'll take turns. Each of us will come up with like the, just literally a random question. Like literally anything. Like what? Like literally anything." So, um, this is the one I came up with. That was a week. terrible description. That was, yeah. That was... This is, we're gonna ask each other a question and discuss it for, like, a couple minutes. Um, okay. But this is my question. And it's actually funny because there's also, this is a side story related to it now, but I thought of it before. But anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. But anyways, the question of the week. So do you know the, the sh do you guys, do you guys know the show? Well, now there's two versions of it, but the masked singer or the masked dancer now it is. Yeah, I've heard of it. I don't watch it, but I've heard of it. But have you seen, like, clips of how, like, ridiculous it looks? No. Oh, okay. Then this question might be a flop. Okay, wait. Oh. If you... Do you have your phone? Like, just search up. Yeah. So, basically, what the mass Singer or Dancer is, is it's like, well, now... It was mass Singer originally. Now they're doing a mass Dancer version. But they put these, like, celebrities, and they're usually, like, lower D D-list celebrities, in, like, ridiculous costumes... And they alter, like, their voice, so obviously you have no idea who's in this costume. And I just, I just feel like it's such a cringe kind of thing. And then they just perform, and they try to guess who it is. So my question of the week is how much, like, I don't, I think we're going to have very vastly different answers, but how much would you want to get paid to be on that show? <laughs> like, how much, like, okay, if you let look me, up the stupid costumes they put you in, yeah, and, like, <laughs> it's, I just find it so cringe. <laughs> The FBI knows that I made oat milk today, so they're sending me uh, little little uh, mm -hmm. advertisements for oats. My FBI I've agent isn't like other people. Mm -hmm. Yo, side note, I'm convinced that the FBI agent that's watching me, they turned down my input volume on Yadina's... We had a little birthday Zoom call for Yadina's birthday. And my input yeah. randomly... My input volume randomly went down, which I didn't touch. It randomly went down, and like halfway through, and I was like, hey, maybe... Because my internet's like really laggy, so I was like, maybe it just like cuts out and people don't want me to repeat it because it's just like my voice cutting out. But then later I check and it was like super low, and I was like, that's weird. So yeah, I was like, was maybe they told me. It was fine in the beginning, and then you went really quiet. But I just thought it was your internet, and because you can't see everyone when we're, when we're screen sharing, so I was like, yeah, because oh, I would talk and it went, wouldn't even. And then when you, yeah, it wouldn't even notice that I was up, talking. Like it was loud. Yeah, so I know that game that. The, the game that we had to um, pretend to be doing like a PowerPoint presentation, that was hilarious. Yeah. We're doing that for Yours literally had me crying. Yeah. yeah. Hold up. Okay, I, I can't find one. Okay. Oh, Ice Cube. But like you see the, the costumes? Wait, hold up. Like, Wait, hold up. And just like the vibe. The costume. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah. And like, you know when like How the segments like, in paid? all those reality shows where they like introduce them? They like alter their voice, like either really high pitched or low pitched. I just, I just find it so cringe. I don't know. So like, here's the thing, here's me. what we're talking. Mm -hmm. If I'm a D-list celebrity, mm -hmm. how, like, for, give me an example, like, what level am I at? Because I know Jojo Siwa is on The Masked Singer. Yeah, I think Mackenzie Ziegler is, is Masked Dancer right now. That's what pe people are saying, that she was, like, the tulip. The tulip, um, yeah. 
the, the tap dancer and I was like, tap dancing is the worst. Like, thing would you do it for free? Would like, at, like, were you like, if someone came up to you right now and was like, no. I want you to come on the mass singer, would you for free? How much would you need to be paid to be like, okay, I'll go. Like, is this something you would do for free? Um, is this I, something that you need like, like if one I was mil? a dealer celebrity? If I was a mm-hmm. deal celebrity, I'd probably, I'd probably go for like, you know, pay me for my time that I'm on the show, you know, like a, mm-hmm. at least minimum wage, definitely not free, but definitely be like, yeah. okay, it's not going to be a great salary, but pay me at least to recognize that I was physically there. Mm-hmm. Um, because first, I think it's just like, it's just fine exposure, you know, I don't think other people find it that embarrassing. And also because, um, there are way more embarrassing things out there. Um, for example, I mean, 90% of the TikTok boys that just post stuff and they're like you're not wrong you've got that's there. more embarrassing to me but that that's you're not wrong at all but yeah I know I just find it so cringe like someone would have to pay me at least one mil to put on a stupid costume and do some dances in a stupid costume in front of those people like I, I don't know I don't think I could not for me fair I'd slay the dance but though. um oh yeah you would I feel like I could see you winning the show like straight up oh. <laughs> My dream is to be on Dancing with the Stars, though. That's, like, mm. I would love that one day. Guys, get me on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Um, Do it. Subscribe. Help us grow so we can get that exposure and she can go on Dancing so, with the Stars. I know that we were only supposed to initially do one question each, but I just really want to ask you this question because it kind of came up okay. to me. because I, More because the mm-hmm. answer came up to me, and I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. What's the most specific... Like, random, but very specific situation that you hope to never be in. Not, like, okay, I'm not oh talking about, like, you're kidnapped and you're being murdered. Like, nothing, like, serious. I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, like, okay. unserious situation, but something that would really, like, make your skin crawl. Like, for example, for mm-hmm. me, my biggest fear is I go into public ba- public restroom and I have to flush the toilet mm-hmm. and I go to press with my foot, right, you know, yeah. the safe way. And some squirt, like a little splash back comes up, and I feel a little bit on my on my face, my my body. I can just kind of bleach that. A little goes on my yeah. face. Big fear. I don't know what I, like. I don't know how I would react. I would definitely cry. That's so specific. I yeah. might throw up. I would probably mm-hmm. throw up. Yeah. Um, and you're talking like not your own. Oh no, that would my own. I can. It's like less fathom. bad. It's still yeah. Yeah. Because it's, there's more, there's more opportunities for that. But I'm saying like, yeah. you just got in, and you go to flush. And right? I saw what happened there, and I leaving yeah. isn't an option. I have to flush this thing. Big fear of mine, mm-hmm. you know. Like so, like I stand that's, extra far. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. I don't yeah. know if I can think of a super specific thing off the bat. Mm. Specific thing. See, I'm not good at thinking of the specific things on the spot. I definitely have many, um, very specific things. Um. I, so the first, when you said that, like, the first kind of situation thing that popped into my mind is just, like, being caught off guard and, like, running into someone that, like, he, like I don't, like, some, like, running into someone that, like, you don't necessarily want on a day, you don't, which is probably, like, okay, I don't want to say, like, um, like a specific situation. That happens situation to me all the time. Where you, like, run into someone, but, like, you're in, like, a, like, a small space, like, small space, like, like an elevator. And you run into someone where, like, it's, like, at the where you have to talk to them. It's, like, that level, like, you can't ignore them, trying to see. Like, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. Like, just getting stuck and having to talk to someone. I don't know. Like, I don't... I, that's, like, the first... That's a really bad thing. Because that, that's happened to me before, too. But I just absolutely hate when, like, you get stuck. Or, like, when you're on the TTC and then someone walks in and then, like... See, but I'm saying, I'm saying situations that you really... But, like, you're seeing that you, you, like, really... That would test your weird, limits. Like, really specific mm-hmm. weird and like things okay, like okay. For, like it's a very specific situation that you really don't know what you what would happen to you you know like you don't know how you would react but you hope that never mm-hmm. happens to you so like nothing mm-hmm. that's happened to, I have before to think about that one. Okay. i have to think okay. about that one i'll, I'll, I'll come back, back to, to that. i'll try to have an answer for next podcast <laughs> okay so, yeah, i have to, I have to think also another oh I, I just came up with another random fear can't remember though i forgot about it it had something to do oh mm-hmm. if somebody if like if i was in any situation where it got so heated that someone spit on me, I don't know what I would do. I also don't know I what I would someone do. someone spit on me before. Ooh. Do you remember Do you remember when we went skating in um, downtown? Nathan Phillips Square? Yeah. And then I we were skating and then some random man skated like in a circle around us and was just spitting at me. Do you not remember that? 
No. Did it hit he, you? He didn't directly... No, 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 no. He didn't directly come and, like, oh. spit in my face. But he was, like, doing, like, a big circle around me and just spitting. And I was in the center. <laughs> That's weird. No, I'm saying, like, someone... Like, someone stares like, you in someone, the face like, and goes... Yeah, yeah. That... Yeah. I don't know what I would do. Because it's, like, That's obviously good. violence is never the answer. So, yeah. But... And also, I'm picturing, like, you know, for example, like, you know, like, one of those situations if it's, like, what would you do? You know, like, the scenarios that they create. Mm. I enter, like, I'm picturing, like, one of those, like, very heated discussions, you know, like, with a stranger where you're kind of fighting for something that's right, and they're being stupid, and then they spit on you, it's like, how do you react? You know, like, I would know. I, because I wouldn't want to cry, mm. because it's, like, the rage, but I mean, I can't stop myself sometimes, that's but, so, yeah. yeah that's so, so think about it and come back to me next time. I'll try to think, yeah. So I'm, I'm very okay. bad with thinking on the spot. Comment yours <laughs> down below, fun. guys. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Give me some ideas. Kay. I definitely have them, and I definitely will think of like a million, eventually. Mm. But I feel like I'm—I yeah. feel like I'm the type of person too to have really weird, specific <laughs> fears as well. So, basically, we've—I think we've talked. We this idea sprung in the heat of a podcast at one point. I forget which podcast it came, yeah. but it came up in, but it came up in a podcast. Or we were like, I think we were talking about how bad Riverdale is, as we do. Um, and yeah. then I think it was, we were talking about how one podcast we should give, like, we should talk about, like, good TV shows. And, like, give reviews on, like, our favorite TV shows. Just, you know, give some, maybe give you guys some recommendations if you haven't watched any of these shows. And then just talk, I mean, I personally love TV. Like, well, I don't know, like, TV shows or whatever, docuseries. Like, i more so a TV person than a movie person. I feel like I can get more invested in the characters and stories with the TV show. And it just feels like it's longer because it goes over episodes, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I love, love, love watching TV. That's, like, oh, way way more than movies. So, I'm very passionate. Mm -hmm. Very fair. Mm -hmm. And, um... So, oh, Are also, you getting to somewhere? Other, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like sitting around waiting for you to get somewhere, and yeah, then you just stopped the sentence. I lost my train of thought. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know what I was trying to go there with. But another thing, I don't know if this correlates, but like I'm also the type of person that gets so invested in TV shows, like to the point where like if I start something and if it's good, like I need to finish it. Like even if it's not good. Mm. Example: Riverdale. Still watching it. Like, I need to keep watching it, I need to finish it, you know? I'm that type of person who gets so mm -hmm. invested and, like, obsessed, where, like, I'll binge things in days. Yeah. But, yeah. So, we're gonna Very go fair. through our top five favorite TV shows of all time today. Um, are your top five in order? Like, five, four, three, two, one, or, or are they just, like, your um... top five? I have a number one, and then the other ones are kind of a free-for-all, okay. because they're all very different. Like, Minor, it's not that I'm watching all of like one of the same genre and then it's like so it's kind of like I can kind of rank yeah. them. It's like they're all very different. No, I feel that. I think my five are kind of interchangeable. So I, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint a, a favorite. Like those are just my five favorites of all time for me. But no, so don't, mm -hmm. they're not in order. Depends on my mood, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Did you want to go first? Okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so okay. So number one, easy, Desperate Housewives. Mm. This show, phew, phenomenal. I watched it twice, and it's yeah. so good that the second time there were literally storylines that I forgot about and that kept me guessing. Like I didn't know what was gonna happen, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Mm -hmm. It was a thrill. It was hilarious. There's times where we were so watching good. and we were like laughing out, like because Lisa and Dri, like they joined me the second time I watched it. Laughter, drama, like it was so entertaining. You it's know, so the good. entire time. It's like you want to watch the next episode every time. Mm -hmm. That's also, um, I'm also going to continue, oh, we're going to do, like, we're going to go back and forth between me and you. Okay, yeah, we'll do one each. Okay. Yeah. I'll also join in, because Desperate Housewives is also on my list. So, yeah, yeah. Desperate Housewives, it is such a good show. It's not real Housewives. Big difference. This is a, what's it, not not a reality, sitcom. a mm. sitcom. Is it a sitcom? S sitcom. Like, a, I don't know if it's called sitcom, it but like a it's story. It's like a drama like, series. It's not yeah. reality. Like That's fake it. characters. It's yeah. filmed, scripted. Yeah. Like, but it, it, is, came, it came out, like, a while ago, so it's a little bit dated, mm -hmm. but not dated, like, it was early 2000s, but I just love this plot line, how it starts, it's and then they, so because the thing is, good. a lot of TV shows, they start with a plot, mm -hmm. and, like, after season two, they can't keep with it, so then it's kind of, like, yeah. they That's lost so the main true. point of the show that, while I'm watching. Yeah. Like, obviously, I have seasons that it, are But that like, more is transition. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have seasons And they kept it really favorite. good because... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you... 
No, I was just gonna say, like, I, like, to, uh, to add to you, but, like, they, like, I have seasons that are favorites, but, like, every season was good. There's no bad season. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Sorry. And, like, they revealed everything in a timely manner, but also mm-hmm. kept everything flowing, and then they had, like, a time jump that was really good. It just, it really felt like you were invested, and the ending was, the ending was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like, they wrapped everything up with a tiny little bow. There's only one little, th- like, there was only one thing that it just made me, like, I cried in an episode because they obviously killed off a character, which, mm-hmm. like, I wish they didn't kill that character off, but that's only, like, it had to be done. Yeah. But it's only because I, there's least, there's characters I cared about less. <laughs> but it was, like, that was beautiful. The ending was, be- like, everything was, like, on the, on the head. And they... The thing is, they still did, like, the crazy dramatic things that you're like, oh, this person's so stupid for doing. But it was never, like, okay, for real, this is too far. Like, no one would do this kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it, they still carried logic with it. And it was just, oh, I don't know. It was so freaking good. Yeah. Like, Phenomenal. Uh, like, 10 out of 10. Because it's, like, it's, like, the genre, like, it's it's mystery. Like, there's a mystery throughout every season. Like, a new, kind of a new mystery yeah. throughout every season. And it so, is a comedy. Like, and it's, it's, I was going to say, it's a what comedy. A, one of its genres is comedy too, and it's it's guys you have to watch it. It's so good, I'm, like, I'm, and like I'm the acting s- is good too. Yeah, it's like the the cast amazing, and I'm gonna say this because it is a comedy genre, and I am the biggest hater of comedy, like um what's it called comedy genre movies and TV shows. I never find them funny, never. I usually yeah. I literally despise anything comedy genre. Like it's very rare that I actually find something in the comedy genre that I actually find funny and Desperate Housewives is one of them they nailed like the comedy on it they like it's the right amount of comedy it's the right amount of mystery like it is the right amount of getting invested into drama and it's like the like the drama that they did it was like obviously still out there like a tv show but it wasn't too too far-fetched like for example Riverdale Mm -hmm. I can't even like when they had what's her face uh Cheryl have Jason's body like her, his corpse with her in her house, disgusting. The, that but show is just another. Breed. So good! Oh my god! Yeah, that show highly, highly recommend. I <laughs> that show has like eight oh. seasons and like they're like twenty episodes long too. And I swear to God, I binge that in like three months. You so finished good. the series the first time before yeah. I finished, and but it's because like it took me a while to get through it all. Mm-hmm. But it was that's a really good show. Like so that's I'm, uh, I'm I think. Yeah, and I think it's it's the the reach of it is like it can like almost anybody can find something mm-hmm. to like about it, right? Like for example, me, Lida, and Dri, we have varying tastes in shows, mm-hmm. but like we were all we were all That's there, true. like we were watching, we were like we were laughing, we were we were like oh, shocked, you know? It's oh, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Another just one more thing about Doctor Housewives is that like I think you've mentioned this before, but like you like I've watched the whole thing. But I can literally, like, after I've seen it, and because obviously you don't want to watch it out of order, but now that I've seen the whole thing, like, I can literally go back and watch any episode again and be just as entertained as I was the first time I watched exactly. it. Exactly. It's like one of those shows. Exactly. You know, there's a lot of so shows good. you can't oh rewatch it, but, like, that you can. It's so good. But, yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be the only one of ours that are the same, but <laughs> that's how good it is. Yeah. See, it hits all markets. And so. literally, I remember when I was telling Victor and Nadia, because I started watching it in grade 11, mm-hmm. and I was telling Victor and Nadia about it, and they were like, yeah. Like, okay. And then in grade 12, like, another friend of ours made Nadia watch it. Like, we all watched it together. And Nadia was like, okay, it's so good. So then it made Victory watch it. And Victory's yeah, like, okay, like, it's the so people, good. The, the, the data is saying it's good. I'll give it a yeah. shot. And, and it's, it's, a qu- it's a quality show. Like, mm-hmm. it's literally, like, the quality was put in the show. And it you can, like, oh, it's just so good. Oh, my gosh. I love yeah. it. Um. Okay. So my next show, like, not necessarily in order. It could mm-hmm. be, a, this one could be a, a number two. Yeah. So it's One Tree Hill. Mm, okay. I've heard so that one, it's it's, yeah. Nadia watched it too. It was really good. Um, it's I think it's two thousand two, show. Like I think this is kind of where it started. Mm-hmm. It's um, featuring um, Chad Michael Murray, Chad Michael Murray, and uh, another person that you might know, Sophia Bush. Those are probably the two biggest names that came out of that show. Mm-hmm. But the whole show was really good. Like it just sucks because halfway through they lose like two of their main characters which the whole storyline was depending on it so it just kind of sucked mm-hmm. but then like everything else it, like the thing is that what that was good was it didn't die off after they left they kept going for a couple yeah. more seasons because they added really good characters after it wasn't that they added weak characters or tried to make do with what they had they added in really good characters 
So it was just like a little bit of a switch up, but it was still, it's a really good show. Oh my gosh, it was, it was so cute too. I haven't watched it, so I can't, I can't add anything, but, you know, trust <laughs> Roxanne. You know, I say five o'clock and <laughs> no one. <laughs> Everyone decides to be quiet every hour but five. Um, sorry. That's literally like with me, I told him to be 30 times I'm recording, but, and he's like, oh, yeah. this is the first time I'm hearing of it. <laughs> Anyways, um. But One Tree Hill, so the genre, so just for people, if they do want to look into it, it's more of a drama, but less comedy. It's more of like a high school teen coming of age, mm. but they're obviously older. Yeah. So it's like none of it's like really, it's just, it's really, it's a really cute show. Like more of like kind of like on the like will they, won't they of relationships. There's one couple that's so cute. Like they're literally, mm -hmm. they wrote really good characters for that. And the acting is really good too. I felt that it was really good. And then they had a... Um, Ooh, I can't remember what season they had like a really good jump of like drama buzz in like mystery and like thriller kind of which mm -hmm. was really good like they um but yeah I like that show too that show is nice. like I, I want to watch it again soon but the thing is like me and Lydia were watching that together and like we had to coordinate schedules and stuff which was hard mm -hmm. but I mean I want to watch that again with her because it was really good nice nice uh, my next one little classic is MTV's Catfish. Holy smokes, guys. This is the one where it's it's a reality show, so like there's we have the host Neve and now Cami, which I absolutely love. Um, they basically every every single episode it's a new person. They follow a new person who has felt fallen in love with someone over the internet for the most part that they've never FaceTimed, they so they don't know if they're like real or not. And I don't know what it is about this show. Like I'm a sucker for a reality show we we know that but this show in specific like i've seen every single episode there's eight seasons now like i'm just like every single episode i'm just as invested like it's always like the suspense like are they gonna be who they say they are they're usually gonna not be which is always fun and it's like i don't know it's just like one of those shows where you're like it's it's kind of like a little bit mind-blowing in the fact like how do you not tell that this person isn't real and but it's I don't know I love it it's it's such a good show I'm still watching it it's still going on they switched co-hosts halfway through or there's like that I don't know you don't watch it right but I don't know if no. you remember the original host it was like Neve and Max for a couple of seasons and then Max left and it was like a season or two of like test ra just having random people come like random celebrities and co-hosts with you know Neve and like trying to find a new co-host and then now they have a co the co new co-host is Cami. And she's so good. I love her too. She adds something so special. Like both Neve and Cami, I think they're a great. Like no shade to Max. I love Max too, but I think Neve and Cami are like a really great, you know, pairing. And I don't know. It's just so much fun. I love it. I love it. It's one of the like. It's I think the only show, in court like, it's the only show that I watch at, that's like live, like a new episode every week kind of show. Like everything else is like on Netflix and all those streaming things. But this one is like every mm -hmm. week and I get so excited. I'm like, oh, it's Thursday. That means Catfish is up and I, I love it. I go check it out. If you love reality, <laughs> that's like, and like a little bit of suspense, like keeps you on your toes and you're like, is this going to be a, a perm? Is it going to be, <laughs> is it going to be a regular person? You never know. It's, it's always very fun. I don't know. I love it. I love it so much. Big fan ever since. I started. didn't know we were doing reality TV shows in this mix. I thought it was like scripted oh. shows. That's oh. That's okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I that's just put it thrown in different. Oh, okay. I just meant like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just okay, took it as in general. Because I mean, most of the stuff okay. I watch is reality, but that's technically the only reality when I put it in my top five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Actually, I don't know if this one counts as the next one counts as reality or not, but I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my next one would be The Office. So it's a classic, mm -hmm. but I watched it back in the day when it was like on TV. Like literally, what it would they would just have uh, reruns of it. Mm hmm. You know, it was, it's just like, it's like a classic show yeah. that's like, it's funny because like the, the stuff that they do is so stupid. The only thing is, um, there's a lot of stuff that they would do that was like, it did make me laugh. Mm -hmm. Like I, I found not like, not cringe as in like, it's like the, the, cause like there's comedy genres that are like, they yeah. do really cringe stuff. It was just kind of like, it was not my style of comedy. No, I get that. But I, I could see how like it is, it is like, it's good. Um. But it's like it's a it's a nice show, you know. Like it's only twenty minutes, so you know it's like you wanna like you can you can watch a bunch of episodes. Like you won't get sick of it. Mm -hmm. But like the later seasons, they kind of like it felt like kind of they were scrambling after like their main character left, which was like 
and like they just put there's one character that i really couldn't stand the entire time and it's not because he was meant to be like there's a bunch of characters like you were meant to not stand yeah but there's one that like i and they gave him so much screen time and i was like i really cannot stand you like i want you off the screen but they had like this one random character creed he's so funny oh my gosh i have to send you um i have to send you some of his stuff like you would you would find his things funny because that's the kind of humor that we have he was like yeah. rant oh it was so good yeah, that's the thing. um I feel like um the, I yeah. haven't seen the I haven't I haven't seen the office like fully I've seen clips here and there, but mainly because like I can attest to that like it's not my style of comedy. However, I can recognize that it is a good comedy show. Unlike like t- yeah. minutes ago when I was saying that I hate all comedy genres, I can recognize that's a good quality show, and has good moments. But as a whole, like it's not really my comedy or what I would choose to watch, so, like, I'm not gonna watch yeah. the full seasons, but I can, like, I've been shown, I'm pretty sure, sh- I, I think you've shown me clips before, I'm pretty sure, um, because I know some people have Maybe. shown me clips, I don't know who else watches The Office in our friend group, but I know for a fact someone's shown me clips, and I, I literally remember one time at work, um, like, a year ago or whatnot, like, one of my co-workers, mm-hmm. he, like, sh- was showing everyone this clip from The Office, and, like, he was, dying of laughter himself that it just made it like so funny and i was like i can recognize this is actually funny so like i it's like yeah like i can i can give it that yeah yeah i feel like that's like on many people's top five (laughs) Mm -hmm. all time for a reason you know Mm -hmm. yeah so i can recognize that um do you have anything else to say for that or Mm -hmm. no that's about it all right so my next one you know sticking with the comedy my next show top five show ever is impractical jokers that holy smokes yeah I, again, that's a good show that i've seen every single episode i have not missed episode there's, i think eight seasons holy smokes mm-hmm. so as i i mean it's ongoing theme of me oh, i'm going to think of theme of me saying that i hate comedy things this like is the only show that continuously, like for more than one episode, almost every single episode, I can guarantee you I've laughed out loud at least once. That is the only show ever that's made me cry hysterically from laughter. Like for some clips, like it is so good. And if anyone doesn't know it, it's like four, it's a real life show, it's not scripted or anything. But there's yeah. four um, lifelong best friends, which I think definitely adds to it because there's a totally different dynamic when it's a friend group versus yeah. when it's just four randos together. And so they're lifelong best friends, and they basically, it's, they do, um, like, whatever challenges, but within the public. But it's meant to embarrass them, not, like, the public. Like, they're not doing things to make them public embarrassed, like, which I find a lot yeah. of prank shows do, and then it's cringe. Like, they're embarrassing themselves, like, they're using their inside jokes, like, and they know what gets each other, so yeah, exactly. it makes it so funny. Like, just go watch any clip on YouTube if you're not, like, and literally, in practical jokes, you can click any episode, you don't have to watch in order. So you can click any episode... Like, I couldn't recommend this show, like, more than that. Like, you can literally pick any episode, anytime, anywhere, watch clips on YouTube. Like, they're so freaking funny. Like, uh, I don't, like, I love that show. I love the yeah. four guys. It's it's so good. Like, truly. It's really good. I've watched it, too. Like, it's it's really good. Usually, for some reason, the, ch- the uh, final challenges, like, they never oh, interested yeah. me. So I would always, like, X those off. But, like, the their bits are so good. It's oh, my so gosh. So funny freaking hilarious yeah, love that, that. <laughs> okay so my my next one this one's like see, i don't want to say like oh these are like basic ones it's like not to be rude it's like these are these are good shows for a reason like they've yeah. been watched by so many people for a reason yeah it's gossip girl mm, yes. that one's a good one like it's like very intense like whatever but it's just like for, with that one you kind of because the whole thing is like that there's, there's this one person who's like a blogger like anonymous gossip girl whatever that's what she calls herself Mm -hmm. and like she's like revealing people's secrets or whatever and i like that like they add it they because they revealed it they only revealed who gossip girl was at the very end of the show but they did it in such a good way that they kept you going Mm -hmm. because like they did have intermediate people but here's what i liked it's like kind of like pretty little liars because pretty Liars came after gossip girl Mm -hmm. pretty little liars did that kind of like how it was like, oh, this person became A or like this. But I felt like with, with Pretty Little Liars, they suspected people of being A mm-hmm. more than people who was actually A. But then there were times with Gossip Girl where the Gossip Girl, like, she stopped because she, like, something happened. I can't remember what. Mm-hmm. Something dramatic happened as a result of her leaking people's secrets. 
So she was like, I'm shutting this thing down. And then someone else rebooted it and was literally being Gossip Girl. And then we, we saw that that, per like, that person got outed as Gossip Girl, but then they were like, no, I was only it for a fraction of the time. So it's like, okay, it makes sense why that one person couldn't be responsible anymore, like who the real yeah. Gossip Girl was. And it was really good. I really like the acting. Uh, uh, Blake Lively and Leighton Meester just do such a good job. The only thing, Chuck Bass is just like a little creepy in the beginning, like like heavy creepy in the beginning, but then later it he becomes less creepy mm -hmm. and just like a little bit more like sly, you know, because they were trying to put him as kind of like a sly guy that tries to be like the uh, the smartest guy in the room at all times. Not the smartest guy, but like the guy ready for yeah, backstabbing, yeah. like to be backstabbed, you know? Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it's a really good show. I like re awesome. like that show. I could watch just episodes of like mm -hmm. even if you don't know the storyline, like you can catch up pretty fast. I was gonna say like do you, so, I haven't seen like it, it, but like by based on what you're describing, I feel like in because I watched Pretty Little Liars, but like is in comparison to this because I feel like Pretty Little Liars like the first couple seasons were good when you were like who's a who's a who's a but then they just kept freaking changing a to the point where you're so confused. And like you don't yeah. really care anymore, and you just want it to end. Was it like it's not like that with Gossip Girl? Like they kept no, it a good amount. No, it was it was way better. Like a good yeah. Amount. And I, they there's only so many things, and also they didn't do, like the the level of, what the Gossip Girl did was like very believable. There was just one person, mm -hmm. because people were sending them stuff, you know. But then like versus A, it's kind of like, yeah. okay, no real human being wouldn't get caught like that, you know, like yeah. stuff like that. So, but no, Gossip Girl is really well done. You might, you might, you should watch it, you might like it, I think. I'll put it on my list, I'll put it on my list, because I like, I don't mind shows like that. I usually am more of a reality show, or you'll see my next one's kind of what my genre <laughs> choice is. But like, mm -hmm. that stuff too I do enjoy. I did rewatch all of Pretty Little Liars, even though, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of hate it at the end, but anyways. Um, mm -hmm. So one of my, what do we have? You have one more? I have two more, right? Um, you have two more, yeah. So one of my top, these, oh gosh. Get, I'm gonna get excited. Um, so one of them is The Queen's Gambit. I know this is gonna be on so many people's lists. Um, it's one of it's newly, uh, newly just just last year released. Obviously, it was. I mean, if you haven't heard of it, I'm shocked that you haven't heard of it because it was literally everywhere. It's six episodes on Netflix. Holy smokes, <laughs> guys! <laughs> yeah, this show like it is like first of all, it's like exactly what I like like uh, one side of me like i really love reality but the other side i also love like I, what do you call them period shows like they're like in a certain time period right i think they're called period pieces yeah or period shows right this is uh yeah. was it in this what what decade was this 70s 80s it was post it's definitely definitely post-war so probably 70s 40s? 80s oh, i i no no not 40s no no wait like 70s 80s right yeah i think around there yeah i don't know anyways it was in a certain yeah. like time period right so it had that essence of it but even beyond that so that's what first like attracted me because it was a show about chess right and i was kind of like i mean i feel like a lot of people were like i'm not watching it's about chess that's boring but like that to me i was like uh, it's kind of i'm kind of skeptical and then i remember nadia telling me her dad was watching it and he loved it and i was like i'll take that as a sign to start it you know nadia didn't watch it yet i don't think but i was like you know i'll take that as a sign right because i was like and i think it was, it, it was i we talked about it before because i've talked about how i loved it i literally it was right before like an exam like it was just like or a big paper i had and i was like perfect time to binge a show um and <laughs> holy smokes i watched five episodes in one day it was it's so good i don't even know yeah. how to describe it no it's it's about a young chess prodigy and like about how she's getting to the top mm -hmm. and it's like it starts from her childhood and it takes her all the way to like the, the defining parts and, and it was real i think it was really good well written yeah it was so well the written. the only thing it was a little confusing at times like mm -hmm. i watched like i binged it too so it's not that like i watched it and like there was like a lot of time between episodes so i forgot stuff mm -hmm. it was literally like it was a li like there were times where like things were going on and i was so confused i was like what's mm -hmm. going on I, I couldn't say but it was, it was really it was still really good yeah no it was so good like i got so invested in the storyline and then just because it followed her from her childhood to her whatever adult years and you can see like her development and then her dealing with you know a bunch of issues like you know addiction like being like you know obsessive like being a prodigy genius in general like i got so invested in the storyline the characters the acting incredible who is i think what's her name anna something oh i can't think of something anna marie joy anna marie joy or something or anna taylor joy oh 
Oh, maybe. Something like... Hold up, hold something up. Joy and something Joy and something Anna. <laughs> I know that perfect. James. Thomas Brody Sangster. James. Like, the cast. Holy smoke. So good. The story. Oh, uh, and Anna Taylor Joy. So good. She was so amazing in it. And then beyond that, the costuming. Like, I'm a sucker for a good co- Like, amazing. And I talked about this before in another podcast, but, like, the way it was filmed. A and B, like the the lighting and the effects. I the filters. I guess the filters is the right word. Yeah. But yeah. Oh my god! Like I think the main thing the filters and like the color scheme. I don't know what the right film terms are for that. But like that, like and the costuming, it's just everything. It was a masterpiece. And if you haven't watched it, you need to. <laughs> like oh I. Yeah, it was such a quality show. It's so good. Like, I think it's up for, like... And it's, like, you wanted to keep pressing and watching all the... Ep- like, you yeah. know, it's, like, you kept wanting to watch the it next so one and the next one. Don't judge it just because it's, like, yeah. about chess. It's more than that. <laughs> the only thing is that sucks is it's a limited series. Mm-hmm. So, that's, like, after that, they're, they're not coming out with it again. I know, I want more. <laughs> I'm very yeah. yeah. Um, Love and it. then I guess my fifth one is The Umbrella Academy. Oh, that, okay. I really like that show. Mm-hmm. It's it's based it's kind of like a superhero type like drama whatever Fantasy, whatever. I really like it. Yeah. And there's there's it's just I think it was just like it felt like I felt so absorbed in the storyline, you know, it really felt like the quality was really good too. Mm-hmm. And like I like that it was they kept you kind of guessing on what happened, you know, like they didn't reveal everything all at mm-hmm. once and then try to drag out the storyline. It was like a little bit like they fed you a little bit a little bit a little bit. Um and it was like just the right amount of like you can see what's coming but then also it's like giving it a good twist yeah. you know like because i'm i'm someone who i can see through predictable shows <laughs> yeah. like no tomorrow yeah. like so many things i can just like logic through that's why when I, shows are confusing like when i and i get lost it's kind of worrisome because it's like i'm usually the person who answers the question about what's yeah. going on she has this weird and <laughs> yeah so um that like but with the Umbrella Academy, it was really good. Like, mm-hmm. it was... I really enjoyed that yeah, show. I, yeah, I wanted to watch... Like, I remember we started watching it, and I was like, I just want to finish this. Up, like, I just want to watch every single episode. Or, well, we started it, and then, obviously, you went at our own pace. <laughs> and then we watched the finale yeah. together. But, um, and Nadia as yeah. well. But, um, I did... See, I I was going to get that one an honorable mention. I did not put it in my top five, because... Here's the thing. I agree with everything you said. Mm-hmm. But for me, like, I... I d- wasn't the biggest like I think I still think the plot line and storyline was good but for me it was it's just not like fully my style like it was a little bit too science fiction I guess fantasy I don't know what the heck you call that genre like in that area you know it was just a little mm-hmm. too much in that genre for me to f- put it in my top five however I still love it it's still one of the best sh- one of like it's in my top 10 I'll give it that but like mm-hmm. I didn't, I wasn't a, especially in season two, I was not a big, the biggest fan of the plot. For me, mm-hmm. it's the cast and the acting. They, I, whoever yeah. casted that show, deserves a raise. Every single cast, like I don't know if there's any other show that I would say like they casted that perfectly. Like everyone fits their role. They're all incredible actors. Like. Like, for me, it's more so the cast and, like, them playing their characters. Like, I love all the characters, too. Yeah. Like, I, that's what really sold me that show more than the storyline. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the storyline and plot. However, I can recognize that it's really good and, like, it keeps you on your suspense and your toes and whatever. But the cast mm-hmm. is what gets it for me in that show. Yeah. And also, beautiful cast, may I add. <laughs> um, <laughs> do my celeb crushes are in there? hit me up um anyways uh, my final show is the marvelous mrs Maisel. for me mm. again this is a period piece in the this is one's in the 60s i believe i think or does it go 50s to 60s i think it might go 50s to 60s God, I I'm think it's like right post war. I'm so, so like 40s I, it, to, like I, it totally well, could be 40s to 50s. I think it's 50s. Take back, it's not 60s. It's it, maybe 40s to 50s. Maybe it's 30s. Guys, I'm so bad at because that's out decades. I 
think I think it, it might would, be may have been I think fifty. I think fifties. I think fifties. I don't quote me on that. Yeah. I'm so bad at that. But like it's again, it's in, so it's a period piece in that time period, and guys, oh my god. So I th- my friend I think Stefa watched it. And then I also heard Nadia also watched it and said like it was really good, but again I was so weary to watch it because it was comedy. I'm literally saying I hate comedy and all these things are like comedy that I like. This is so contradictory, mm-hmm. but this is good comedy. This is what I'm saying, guys. This because it's in the comedy genre, and I was like, like yeah. I don't want to do that. Wrong. So freaking good from i think for me like the first thing like the storyline i really enjoy it i think the care i like the characters i especially like you know midge i like her character i love Abe. Yeah. her dad holy smokes he's his own show oh really i love him i love his character so much he did he was in uh he he was the main <laughs> character of a, a show called monk ah he's good the actor I um i love the character i i love the characters kind of, i love the storyline but for me the main thing i love the costuming oh my god incredible and the way it's filmed so like the angles and like i literally watched like a i think netflix put out like a 30 minute like thing of how they filmed one scene or whatever and i was so invested because i think it's so incredible i'm also obsessed with new york hello so that to me i was like (sighs) so good but i really really love that show that like that is like one of my like that show encompasses like what style of tv i like pretty much like that along mm-hmm. with reality like but more so I love that I love period pieces I love the storyline yeah. like it was the right amount of comedy it's a little much here and there but like you know it I don't know I just overall like everything all the, the like the bad things Trump like it was so good it was I loved it especially season two yeah I'm for me? obsessed with season two sorry it's not- for me, um, I really like the main character. She's a phenomenal actress. Mm-hmm. Her actor, I don't know what. She's amazing. She does an amazing job. Like great acting. Mm-hmm. The only thing, the only problem with that show for me is that she's the only character I like. Mm. Everyone else, I'm like, like kind of like, I don't know about them. But mm-hmm. I really like her too. That's like she's definitely an honorable mention. Like that show, you you put me on it. Yeah. And it was, it's really good. It's a quality, like, it's a high quality show, yeah, you know? Yeah, from, like, if you appreciate, like, the way things are, like, filmed, like, even, I don't know much about it, but I could tell, like, that was filmed phenomenally, and, oh, the yeah. costuming, oh, just every, oh, God, I could go on for hours about nothing. And season two, in particular, <laughs> like, I cannot, and the, so season two and the episode where she does the, um, the show with the te- with on television with the phones like and then that's oh, where yeah. she meets shy baldwin that episode and season two as a whole holy smokes guys holy smokes <laughs> wow but yeah yeah that's my top five well we'll what if we do next uh, part two, oh, part two. We'll yeah, do part, because i have a whole list of honorable mentions that i want to go through of like why they didn't make the cut, but also why they're on. That's true. The honorable mentions. I liter- list. Yo, I literally have a full list <laughs> too of like honorable mentions. Yeah. Because <laughs> like they're never. Yeah. They're and then we some, should have some dishonorable yeah, mentions. And dishonorable mentions, yeah, like the other side. Because yeah, there's definitely some that I love, yeah. like Umbrella Academy, but I didn't put in my top five. <laughs> but um, that for that reason. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, that was our top five yeah. faves. So let us know what makes your cut. Yeah. What's your favorite show of all time? Please comment down below. Let us know if any of these inspired you to watch them. Mm-hmm. Give it a taste. What are your thoughts are on these new shows? Who knows? Yeah, let us know. We want to hear. But anyways, guys, thanks for chatting. Thanks for staying along. <laughs> and stay tuned oh, for part two. Yes. Oh, stay tuned for part yeah. two. We'll read you our honorable mentions and dishonorable In mentions. A week, two weeks from today. Get, get excited. But remember, kids. And remember, kids. <laughs> don't, don't do, do too, too much. much. Oh, I-